Hi, everybody. Russ and the West End Network. Hope you're all safe and well. Happy Friday to you, one and all. Hope you've got a lovely evening planned. And West Ham can't ruin it until Monday. In it, as we do on the Friday um, before a game, we present, we provide the synopsis. Uh, of the press conference, David Moyes' press conference, um, with the help of Football London. Uh, Football London's John T. Coleman, who films a little video for us in the car park at Rush Green as he comes out of the press conference to get his view. He's, uh, you know, sort of, uh, he's in the press conference, so to get his view on how he thought it went, interesting points. He provides sort of the the narrative, so to speak, and then I go into a little bit more detail in terms of what was said. And obviously, we only can look at what's said in the live section of the press conference, not necessarily the whole section uh, in terms of the embargo section. It did seem to be quite a long embargo section, so I'm sure there'll be some interesting stuff that comes out later on tonight. Let's listen to John T, who will be giving us his view of the press conference today. Good afternoon, everyone. John T. Coleman here from uh, Football London, uh, following David Moyes' pre-match press conference here at Rush Green. Um, plenty on talking agenda today. Um, obviously, it's, um, the game's not till Monday, so you know, plenty to plenty to discuss and far few days of a transfer window, recent events, and you know, some interesting uh, talking points. Uh, There's plenty from David Moyes about uh, Mikel Antonio's recent comments. Obviously, um, he said that um, Antonio's hinted that talks have happened uh, over a potential exit for him before the window shuts on Tuesday night. Now, David Moyes has said that those talks haven't come from a club. Um, you know, as far as they're concerned, they want to keep hold of Mikel. Um, who, of course, is the club's all-time leading goal scorer in the Premier League. So, uh, yeah, that could be um, an interesting development to see see what happens in the in the final few days of a window. Obviously, Everton have been linked with him. Wolves have been linked with him, and uh, and and some MLS clubs as well. So, interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, team news wise, he has spoken uh, in depth, which you can read on um, Football London about Ings, Skamaka, Corne, and Zuma. Uh, I'll run through them quickly. Ings got an injury. Uh, we know it's a knee injury, but it's about 20 seconds into coming on um, against Everton. Typical luck. Obviously, he would have missed this game anyway because uh, he's cup tied. He played um, for the club earlier this season. Um, he played for uh, Aston Villa sorry, earlier this season in this competition, so he wouldn't have played even if he was fit. Um, they don't think it's going to be too long. Uh, Gianluca Scamacca, again, a striker with a knee injury. Um, when we spoke to Moyes last week, well, in fact, I asked him on this one and the same today. He said that he had to do three weeks of, I think they're called PRP injections. Now, he had his first one last week. He's had his second one and he's due for his first one next Wednesday. So, uh, obviously, Skamaka recently posted on Instagram, you know, he's, he's expected to be back soon, which is obviously a big boost. Um, it sounds like, well, he's definitely not going to make a squad for Derby if he's got an injection, due to have an injection two days later. It probably means Newcastle's a doubt, which of course is a week on Saturday, uh, but maybe the home game with Chelsea, you think, which and, and potentially Danny Ings has got a similar ish return time as it well. But was first understood earlier this week, you know, that might change. But so, yeah, Derby and Newcastle, doubts for both of them. But, you know, hopefully mid February we'll see both of them back, back, in, um, back in the squad and stuff. Um, what else is there to report? Kurt Zuma. Obviously got a, um, he, he went off, um, well, we saw him actually struggling with a knot in the first half, quite early on in the game. Um, shortly after coming on, we played on through it, um, played for 90 minutes, actually got sort of, I don't know if it was an assist directly, but played a hand in Bowen's first goal in that 2-0 win. Um, but yeah, it's a hip issue for him. Uh, they're looking into it as minute, minute, at the moment, it's quite, um, there's a lot of swelling apparently, so it's hard to decipher exactly how serious it is. Um, Zoom has been rested in a lot of the cup games this season when he's fit anyway, so I don't think he would have played against Derby, certainly unlikely. So, so yeah, again, I think I'd be interested to see what results are with that and uh, where West Ham go. Um, obviously, there's only four centre-backs at the club at a minute following Dawson's recent exit. Uh, Zuma's injury takes down to three, so yeah, hopefully Zuma will be back uh, not too distant future. And the other one was Maxwell Corne. Now, he has missed virtually four months of action. Uh, I asked him about Corne. He's been in France for a few weeks with a specialist. He's due back. He's due back at Rush Green on Monday, so um, yeah, I think that's just for initial an, initial assessment. And um, I think even if 
Che comes back and everything looks really good. Um, he's still probably got a couple of weeks of training before he can sort of be considered for selection. But I think the hope is that he comes back in pretty good shape when he has this assessment at the club on Monday. So fingers crossed um, he, is, he is in good condition. Um, there's plenty to come from the embargo section, not just tonight, but over the next couple of days, obviously, because there's such a long gap now between this and the game. It's, it's compared to normal, where sometimes you have a press conference on a Friday for Saturday or Friday for Sunday. So it's plenty more to come. But every word from the uh, from the live section of David Moyes' press conference is now up on Football London, as well as all the injury bits I've just discussed. So you can have a look at them. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes peeled, peeled on Football London over the coming days uh, for everything Moyes has said ahead of that trip to Derby on Monday night. Top man, top man, John T. As always, check him out, John T. John T. Coleman, um, on Twitter. Obviously, the Football London uh, blog and the, all the Football London stuff. As he said, he, there's there's an article up there now which goes into more detail in terms of what Moyes said about the injuries. Um, we will talk about that through in a minute. Let's go in through and see what was said. And this was from the live section. So, in terms of um, let's go, let's go live. There we go. Uh, let's take out the logo as well. Um, in terms of the importance of Monday, I asked several questions about this um, throughout. And basically, says any win, you feel much better. Um, I've got to say, it's an important win for us. This was in terms of Wednesday, in terms of last. So, and we're pleased to get done. It's a good opportunity, but you still have to win the games put in front of you. This time last year, we were minutes from knocked out from Kid by Kinsterminster. Um, Derby are on a really good run uh, at the moment. They're a Premier League club in stature and size, so we're giving them respect, and we hope to get through to the next round. So, yeah, and we spoke to um, we spoke to a Derby fan uh, on the live show, and so check that out. And we'll be we've clipped the actual interview about Derby, and that'll be going out probably Sunday, um, so you can listen. But Derby on a great run. Five wins in a row. I think they're undefeated in something ridiculous as well. It's not going to be uh, an easy easy task at all. At all. And in terms of whether he was said, he was, is he up for the cup or not? Um, but he says, I, I got to the final Everton and was at Preston when we went 2-0 up against Arsenal's Invincibles and lost 4-2. The competition could open up as a few clubs have been knocked out already, so these ties get thrown up. But the draw can sometimes go against you, or you can play badly and get knocked out. Brilliant. Uh, it would be huge for me to win a, t- uh, a trophy. I try every year. It's just because you change a few players means you don't want to win a trophy, as you have squads of players. We've seen that in the Premier in the FA Cup already this season with clubs changing their players around and we we expect to see some sort of change in terms of the uh, in terms of the squad um, as John T alluded to we haven't got many options in all honesty particularly at centre back but you guys put put your 11 together the West Ham Network community and we'll be we're talking about that and also our predicted 11s myself and Anton uh, that'll be coming up this weekend as well in preparation for the game it is about. I think it's 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 for me. It's, it's a fine balance between between actually uh, resting players and momentum as well. Um, so you know you want to keep a core of players together. And people, you know, obviously towards the end of the last season, we ran ourselves into the ground a little bit. But there was consistency in the team. You know, you know, every cloud. You know me. But there was consistency in the team selection. So you sort of knew players knew the the role they were playing, you know, whether we do back now, if we're going back four, back, back three, I don't think we've had the same defense all season, maybe possibly, um, if not very, very rarely. And uh, now obviously with Zuma's injury, which again, um, John T alluded to doesn't, doesn't sound too exciting to be honest. He, he was basically said that Zuma's a bit up and down at the moment with his knee. Uh, he picked up an injury. He's hope they're hoping it's not too bad. Um, he's, he's got a hip abductor, adductor type injury. Um, he got it when he overstretched, he flicked his foot overstretched <laughs> when he overstretched? and he tweets it. He got it the first half played through his thigh is slight is swollen badly at the top. So there's a, so we think there's a small tear, but we're not sure. Uh, we have to wait until all the blood goes away and it all dies down. We will know better when it all dies down, which is obviously another huge blow because we we were getting him back and we were getting a decent result with him in the team, which we were. And also Craig Dawson going, there will be there will be some ins. I think there'll be, and Hammers headlines this afternoon we spoke about. I think there's four Premier League centre backs that we could be in, in in line interested. I think Moyes wants a Premier League ready, somebody who can come in and just. 
hit the ground running. Um, and there's four that have been identified, apparently, Michael Keane. And they're not the most exciting ones, but then Craig Dawson wasn't the most exciting signing, was it? And he turned out to be uh, a cult legend, really. So uh, Michael Keane, um, Jamal from Newcastle, Nat Phillips, and <coughs> Callum Chambers. So, you know, and Rob Holding, apparently, someone's mentioned him as well. So I could see one of them possibly coming in, uh, a loan to buy, maybe. Uh, we'll see. Um, asked about uh, West wanting to win for West. Ultimately, the best sides in the club, in the country, tend to win the FA Cup. So you need to prove you're one of them and try to win the trophy. And obviously, with many teams playing each other, uh, i.e. Arsenal, Man, Man City tonight. Um, you know, there is an opportunity in the same way there was an opportunity with a Carabao Cup, really, when you look at who were the final four this season. Um, obviously, that being more most likely to be Newcastle, Man United final, but still the likes of Southampton and the likes of um, Nottingham Forest got through to the semi-final. So, you know, it's um, a, couple of, a couple of wins and with your team sort of playing each other, it does, it does open up quite a bit after a couple of a uh, couple of rounds um but obviously in terms of the whole thing around momentum obviously we won on won on saturday um and uh, about moving things along so we've had some okay performances which didn't lend to results last week we had an okay performance which did lend to a win so we need to get better performances and more victories and derby's going to be a tough game derby's going to be a very tough game it is it's not going to be easy at all at all um and and as and obviously that being on the Monday, the Tuesday is transfer transfer deadline day, and I think there will be some movement for West Ham, um, mainly to cover, mainly as cover. I think. Um, asked about transfers. This 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 is this is where I put up the title screen. Asked about transfer. He said, "We brought players in. We wanted in the summer. Then brought in Danny Ings a week ago. I'm not saying I'm not saying he won't do any business, or if nobody will leave before the deadline. Interesting." But nothing is in the pipeline at the moment. But there are four or five days to go to the deadline. Is it Sunday, Mon- Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Yeah, four days. Okay, four, four and a half days. But the interesting line for me was, and I, I'm not saying nobody will leave before the deadline. If that was the case, if there was no one going to leave, he wouldn't have said that. In, in my opinion, maybe I'm just going through words a bit too you know, precisely. But for me, if you, you would say, no, close shop. No, I've done all my business. There may be some in and outs, you know, rather than say there may be some ins rather than some outs. And obviously one of those potential outs being Antonio. And that was a question. He was asked several questions about Antonio. And obviously his comments made on the podcast the other day. Um, and uh, this, this, is, this is what he said about Antonio. He said, Mickey is someone who has been talking about his future rather than the club. Danny will be cup tied for this game and we hope he's not going to be missed too much. He had an injection in his knee. Um, so... Uh, Ings is having an injection need to see, uh, and that was yesterday, I think, to see how, if it means we can speed up the, the, the process. We felt we could add to I don't want spending more money, but this world changes quickly. We have no intention of doing anything. We want Mick here, playing well, scoring goals, and he'll be and we'll be happy to have him. The interesting line was that first line. Mickey is someone who has been talking about his future rather than the club. And as John T alluded to, Mick it seems that, talks potentially have only happened between his agent and clubs not the club but then we read a report saying that was it walls uh put a formal bid in for a loan offer so we don't but we don't know i mean it's all hearsay isn't it but it seems interesting moise's comments that actually antonio is the one who seems to be having his own agenda basically um and 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 he's talking about his future rather than necessarily us talking about his future with him still still sees him very much as part of the first team um you know he's our Premier League top goal scorer you know and he offers you know he's a he's a unit he offers something different compared to probably any other forward in the in the Premier League really maybe apart from Adama Traore in all honesty in terms of what he can offer in power and pace when he's on his game when he's on his games and uh and we'll need him we will need him. I, can't, I can't see him going unless unless this injection to Ings makes gives him, you know, superhuman strength on his back. And, you know, Skullmacher, as we said, he's having a series of three injections. He's had his second one. He's got his third one on Wednesday. He he won't be ready in time for the next weekend, that's for sure. Um, unless you bring in someone. Um, 
but it seems that everyone, everything sort of is like going through treacle at the moment. It seems like that Moffy deal in our, it's like the hokey cokey really. Um, and then as any Ola deal is like, you know, it just seems we're wading through treacle with these transfers. Um, albeit we haven't got a rush. There is, there isn't a, I mean, he, uh, we've got the game to the, on Monday and then obviously playing Newcastle on Saturday, uh, next week rather. So it's Newcastle. Yeah. Newcastle next week. So, we need to get them in to start blunt to start sort of you know getting them used to working with with the team, but I think I think they're holding out to see how these instru- in- injections work. Pers- personally, just reading between the lines, you know, they're talking a lot about about the time frames of the injections. The fact that Skarmac is third race on Wednesday isn't ideal because it. What if he has a really bad reaction to it? Then we're up shit quick without a paddle, really, aren't we? Um, asked about the game uh, on Monday, the Derby game. He says, we go into Derby with a, we, we go to Derby with a strong squad and try and get through the FA Cup. Derby would not be out of place in the Premier League and they have a very strong squad. They have some had some serious problems, but they look as if they're getting themselves back together very much so. I look at big clubs like Sheffield Wednesday, Leeds, who have got been down, and when clubs like Derby go down, it can be difficult to get back up. They've had other problems, but they have got themselves into a good position, a great position, I'd say, in League One. We're going to give them every respect they deserve and go there and try and get get through. And and to be honest, that that's that's perfectly yeah, fair enough. Give them all that. I agree with all that. Derby are in a fantastic position. They've won the last five. I think they're undefeated in something like 10, 15, something ridiculous like that. They I mean, you look at that, I think we we went through the, the league, League One, the top six. The top sort of apart from I think Plymouth are top, and the next four teams are big teams, like the likes of Derby. Bolton, you know, all like teams who were, you know, in and around the the top flight very very recently ago. So they're and they're playing well. They got some good players. You know, we we talk, we spoke about uh, Max Bird. We spoke about people like like, like McGoldrick. Um, we speak about um, uh, I mean, there's several players we we speak about, um, and they've got some good players. But they've got a transfer embargo, which is quite interesting at the moment. Which means they're not really forced to sell any players at the moment because they can't replace them so they don't have to sell them unless it's silly money you know so it's a weird thing having a transfer embargo they they can't buy any players but they don't not really forced to sell players unless obviously they get into any more trouble but they seem to be sort of on the right foot now and um and definitely are the the derby fan goal hanger he uh adam he uh, he he was very he was very uh excited about what what derby could achieve really they seem to it seems that they've cleaned all the book cleaned the books they've sorted it taken out the trash and now they seem to be on a on a a forward trajectory so good luck to them good luck to them i say after monday of course asked about cup upsets obviously we're going to be on itv itv4 i think because obviously it's west ham and they assume we're going to get be upset i'll never be i'll never be complacent there we go he said it. I was brought up on Ronnie Radford's goal for Hartford or Hereford against Newcastle. I am never surprised when I see great upset wins in the FA Cup. I will never be complacent. There he go. He said it. I'll never be complacent. But obviously, the, we we know that the um, we know that the Wasland the um, cameras are expecting a a upset. Hence, why we're there. Basically, in it. Hence why I'd be there. And then there was, finally, there was a question about Everton. Obviously, um, you know, changing it. Obviously, we beat them. And the West Ham curse, you know, any team, it seems, we we, we, we win against. They were, the, the manager can't help it. And they get sacked. Um, and obviously, it's speculation that, uh, that Deitch is expected to be appointed the Everton manager. Bielsa flew in for talks by other accounts and didn't want to, uh, and didn't want it. By, by what we've assumed, um, and he was asked about the Everton job, and and, and he, he was he was quite sort of um, he just said it's not for me to talk about Frank or Sean as I know both of them. I'm disappointed to see Everton a, a bit broken at the moment, but it's a great club moving to new stadium. I'm sure they'll get back into the future. He then speaks about Sean Dyche, saying Sean's a great man and and would do a good job there basically if, if he if he joins there, um, and th- and that was and that was basically it. That's basically it, to be honest. There wasn't, um, as I said, we got the embargo section coming up later, which will be quite interesting by all accounts. Um, tonight, don't forget, we got um, Irish Tommy, uh, the late late show. They'll be on at ten o'clock UK time, talking about whether the academy is pointless. Um, obviously, the news that uh, Will Will Greenwich went to uh, has, has joined Colchester United on a permanent deal. It was meant to be originally a loan deal, so maybe there's a something's happened there, but. Um, 
yeah is, is our academy a pointless it's quite interesting you know uh i've i've got some views i'm doing some analysis at the moment you know me i like my analysis about that and i think it'd be quite interesting um also while we have you don't forget the latest episode of the we are westland podcast is out now so you can listen to that uh every wednesday there's a new episode will be on there next week we get the boys from we are westland network we are we are westland podcast next week coming up um probably around the uh transfer window day and stuff like that and that's it my friends so take care stay safe stay warm stay healthy have a lovely lovely uh friday what have you got for dinner let me know in the comments what's on the agenda kebab friday for rusty b and the budden household as always um take care stay safe stay warm stay healthy stay humble keep the faith and uh, enjoy all the lovely west ham derby content we're going to have over the next couple of days bye-bye <laughs>